Hello everybody, welcome to Pink Carbonara and I'm Michael. Today we are going to take a look at some of the resurrected Kamen Riders. Happy Easter everybody! The day which we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus by doing such things as... What do people actually do in Easter? Besides going to church? Uh, well, it's weird because in Hong Kong we don't do much in Easter. So, in the spirit of Easter, let's take a look at some of the Kamen Rider who died and got resurrected. Now, before we start, let's lay down what really counts as a true resurrection in the Kamen Rider franchise. Because for those who doesn't know, whenever there's a crossover movie, stage show or TV special of some sort in the past 10 years or so, the franchise love to throw in monsters, riders from different series in the mix, regardless of the status the characters were in in the original series. These writers were temporarily revived for a brief appearance in a special and were later died again. As such, we don't count them. We are only counting those Kamen Rider who died and got resurrected and is canon and it's still alive right now in the Kamen Rider universe. Unfortunately, I haven't seen every single Kamen Rider series, so I really need an article for the research of the video. So I'm so sorry if there's any, you know, misinformation. First up on our list, we got our beloved OG Kamen Rider. Kamen Rider Ichigo was killed in the Kamen Rider Ichigo movie, the one which crossed over with Kamen Rider Ghost. After so many years of battling Shoka, Takeshi Hongo was heavily injured going into a battle and eventually was defeated by Orga. Alright, I'm so sorry, I forgot to tell you guys that I might pronounce the name wrong in this video, so please correct me in the comment section below. Yup, just a heads up. Ichigo was eventually defeated by Orga from the new evil organization, Nova Shoka. He was resurrected within 5 minutes in the movie after hearing the cry of Mayu. So how exactly did Ichigo got resurrected? Um, I don't know, power of love? <laughs> you know, as a Kamen Rider fan, we are so used to, you know, nonsensical story plot at this point. But sometimes the resurrection kind of makes sense though. Just like the death of- During episode 18 of Kamen Rider Kuga, Kuga was battling against a Gorongi named Mijinogade and was poisoned by his attack. He was later hospitalized and his heart stopped for a while. But thanks to his enhanced healing factor, he was brought back to life in the next episode. Revival like this make much more sense to me, as the healing factor is something that was mentioned as one of Kuga's ability before. And it's certainly more believable than, you know, the power of love. Kuga, however, is not the only Kamen Rider who got resurrected by its own healing ability. Kota Kamen Rider Gaim was killed by Michi, Kamen Rider Yugen, at episode 43 of its own series. This is definitely one of my favorite Kamen Rider death, with Kota purposely letting Michi kill him in order to let Michi forgive himself of what he has done and move on. Quota was resurrected from the dead next episode by the healing power of the Overlord, which he obtained. What I love about this resurrection is that not only does it make sense as it was stated before, the Overlord power is basically as powerful as a god, it also established the fact that Quota is no longer human. He has rejected humanity, so he's basically deal. <laughs> Gaim's death lies at the category of being betrayed and usually these kinds of death are the more complex one, you know, shake up the whole storyline. Another camarader who was betrayed and got killed and got resurrected is Gentaro Kamen Force was defeated by the series secondary rider Meteo at episode 31. Meteo was blackmailed by Yamada, the Aria Zodiac, so he can revive his friend. Gentaro was mortally wounded but was revived by the power of Force Final Form, the cosmic switch at the next episode. Also, power of friendship. <laughs> Not only is death impactful for the story, revealing the identity of Meteor in front of the gangs. Force revival is also a redemption arc for his killer, Meteor, and a sign of friendship of the Kamen Rider Club. They also use this opportunity to introduce us to the cosmic switch. It's a really well handled, you know, Kamen Rider death and resurrection. The other rider who was brought back to life with the introduction of a final form was. 
Drive was killed by the Freeze Roymule after it achieved its over-evolved form at episode 32. The attack also killed Mr. Belt. Shinosuke, Kamarada Drive, was brought back to life by... Um... How? So, the belt secretly fused with Shinosuke body and mind, and when the other bring back the belt to life by combining all of the shift cost power, adding on the speed of the car, Shinosuke was somehow brought back to life, becoming drive type Tridoron. For me, the writer just sort of came up of a random explanation to bring him back out of nowhere and the discovery of the method and the solution was deal within an episode is just you know way too quick and really doesn't make too much sense for me but you know what else doesn't make much sense the multiple death of Kamarada Ghost has always been regarded as one of the worst Kamarada series out of the whole franchise and I think one of the reason is because of the poor handling of character death Takeru, Kamarada Ghost, was killed and resurrected not only once, not twice, but three times during the series' TV run. He was infamously known as the Kamarada who died at the first episode by a Kitana Gama. He kinda died again at episode 12 by giving up his chance of revival to resurrect Kanon. At episode 33, he again died by Game Miser destroying his Ore Icon. He kinda came back to life again as a ghost within the same episode and his final form, Infinity. He was properly resurrected at episode 49 by the Great Eye, a godlike being in the Gamma world. Takeru died and came back so many times in the series that death just doesn't mean anything anymore. Cause we know they can just continuously come back to life. It just shows how poorly the writing is on this series. And it's one of the many more reasons why Ghost is one of the people's last favorite. Speaking of poorly handled rider death, I'm just going to quickly mention which in my opinion, is the worst Kamarada death in the history of Kamarada ever. Our beloved... Originally, I was going to include him in this list as he was killed and resurrected in his own movie. Then, he was killed again and resurrected in CO. Such a dumb way to be revived, by the way. <laughs> DK was eventually killed by Oma Zio in a Rider Time special. And dare I say, it is the most humiliating way to die, staining his legendary status. All I want to say is, you know, DK deserve better. Usually, Kamarider death and revival only happens within a series for one or two specific riders. But there are some series which include a massive amount of Kamarider death and revival. One of the most famous series is... Every Yuki riders, including Yuki and Knight, were killed or died at some point in the Yuki series. They were all brought back to life after Shiro Kanatsuki performed one last time vent, ensuring the rider fight never happened. Everyone lived happily ever after without the memories of the rider war. Basically time travel or is it parallel universe? Sorry, I haven't watched Yuki yet, so I cannot comment much on this one. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> another series with massive amount of rider revival is yet again another series which I haven't watched yet. <laughs> Apparently everyone died during the battle in the Tower of Destruction or by the Earth Destruction and were either resurrected by Yuri's healing ability and Thomas' restoration of Earth? Again, I never watched Saber. I have no idea what was I talking about there. A series which I actually watched and containing a lot of resurrected Kamen Riders is... Kamarada Gamu, Kamarada Laser, Poppy, and Paradox are all died during the series and came back becoming or because of their Buckstar data. Kamarada Laser died at the famous Christmas episode, episode 12, by Gamu. Gamu was killed by Paradox at episode 23. They both came back as Buckstar at episode 30 and 34. Paradox was killed by Hyper Mudeki at episode 39 and was brought back and restored data at episode 40. Same goes to Poppy, which died at episode 44 and returned at episode 45. Although a lot of characters died and brought back during the series, I still think that death were all meaningful and kinda make sense in some way. Well yes, after seeing the revival of Gamu, Laser, and Paradox, I already know Poppy will come back to life sooner or later with a similar method. However, 
the death of each of these characters were handled with such respect that I was invested enough to look past the obvious outcome. Kamen XA is certainly one of my favorite Kamen Rider series and I highly recommend it for those who haven't seen it. Well, I just realized that I kind of spoiled a lot of character death. So, uh... <laughs> But you know what? You should still check it out because it's a good series regardless if you know who's gonna die or not. Speaking of highly praised series... Kamen Rider Bill also contained a lot of Rider death and revival. Grease, Road, and Mad Road were all dead by the end of the series. They returned following the creation of the new world. Um, not much to comment on this one. The deaths are certainly impactful and the resurrection also makes sense. What I dislike about it is how the characters regain their memories from the old world in the latest story. I always thought that the final episode from a TV series is a good ending point with a bittersweet ending. But you know, since Bill is so popular, they're gonna capitalize on the popularity, making a lot more after movies and special later on. Well, speaking of bittersweet ending, Episode 48 of Camerata Double is the episode which will never fail to make me cry. Philippu, one half of Camerata Double, became Data after his battle with Utopia Dopan, leaving the second half of Double, Shotarong, to become Futo's protector Camerata Joker. His death showed the growth of Shotarong, which he finally is willing to make the hard decision to protect the city that he loves. Until they decided to bring him back the next episode. Philip was brought back to life by the next episode by Wakana performing a Gaia Impact. I dislike this episode a lot. By bringing Philip back, it kind of discounted the determination of Shotaron in my opinion. Maybe I personally just prefer the bittersweet endings. Kamarada Maha was killed in the Kamarada Sango movie and was surprisingly remained dead until the next movie, Kamarada Yogo, which he died over and over again until the timeline reset. I purposefully put Maha's death in this part of the video in separation of Kamarada Drive because of how it was involved in the most confusing way of resurrection possible, time travel. Funny enough, the most complex uh, time travel plot in a Kamen Rider series, in my opinion, is not from Dano, and it's from this movie, Kamen Rider Yogo. Our main cast consists of Drive, Maha, Fice, and Zeronos in the series. They are all stuck in a time loop in which with every death, Shoka gets more powerful. After multiple resets and different people sacrificing, at the end, it was revealed that one of the person from the cast has such strong feelings that they are reactivating the time alteration machine. The camera in question? It is uncertain if Inui, Kamarada 5, survived after the event in the TV series. However, it is not until this movie that he was revealed to have died. He is still alive all this time due to the effect of the time alteration machine. In order to end the time loop and defeat Shoka, the machine will need to be destroyed, causing Inui to disappear. And since Maha died in one of the incorrect timelines, the destruction of the machine will not affect him, hence he will be resurrected. It's very confusing. At the end of the movie, Inui decided to die once again to save the world. Facing the shocker leader, which is himself. <laughs> I'm, I'm very confused. Is he from the other timeline or is he from another universe? He stops the time loop by destroying the machine. So is he still alive? Well, we are not quite sure yet. And this is one of the most special cases in terms of Kamen Rider death and resurrection. I also did a series of resurrected Kamen Rider toy photography in celebration of Easter. If you are a Kamen Rider fan, why not check them out on my Instagram or Twitter in the link description below. I try to take the photos in a uh, darker environment, I mean like darker way, and I make it black and white and just glow the eye with color. Well, that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. We have covered a lot of different ways a Kamen Rider can come back. Rather, it's from, you know, 
the power of love or friendship, self-healing ability, final form, or even time travel. So which one is your favorite? Which one makes the most sense? And of course, as always, we haven't covered everything in the video. There are still a lot of Kamen Rider which got resurrected. Anyway, thank you so, so much for all the support. Every single one of you has been very positive. So thank you so much. And happy Easter, everybody. Have a nice one, guys. Take care. Bye.